we all know who that is, right? right? But a lot of times we see this guy. Am I correct, sis? We see this guy, right? Brother in the back right there with the plaid shirt on. We usually see this guy's Jesus Christ. Am I correct? That's what we normally see. Not saying we all believe, but this is what we see everywhere. Now, jump to verse 10. Verse 10. Read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day uh -huh. and heard behind me a great voice. So now John the Revelator is on the island of Patmos and he heard a great voice behind him. Go ahead. As of a trumpet uh -huh. saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Who's Alpha and Omega? Jesus Christ. He said, the voice said to John the Revelator, I am Alpha and Omega. Go ahead. The first and the last. The first and the last. Go ahead. And what thou seest. And what you see. The revelation that's being revealed to you, what you see, write in a book. Write it down in a book. What book he's supposed to write it down in? The, say it again, brother. The Bible. Yes, so we have a direct account from the one that Jesus the Christ revealed himself to. Huh. Verse 14, please. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, brother, come here real quick. You come here. Take off that hat real quick. Whew. Take that thing off. Wow. Wow. Hold on a minute. Stop the presses. So, process of elimination, remember that. We have a depiction of what Jesus Christ looked like. This is not saying it's him. But you know when you have somebody commit a crime, so somebody robs this store. Say, say that again, sister. And you sketch according to the description given. So now, this brother right here is also a spitting image of the description we're about to give. I'm trying to tell you now. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the head, the hair on his head and his hairs. Where were those hairs? The hairs on his face. Because it's a law for the Israelite man to have a beard on his face. So the hairs on his head and the hairs on his face were what? White, like wool. So they were white in color. As white. And woolly in what? Texture. That's right. Texture. Now, who has woolly hair on the earth, brother, right here with the braids on? Who has woolly hair in the earth? Yeah. You do, right? So called black people, right? Am I right? What differentiate me between an African? Okay. We'll get that in a second. We'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Now, Real quick, read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus the Christ revealed himself to John the Revelator. And John the Revelator wrote this down. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Go ahead. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So now that says his eyes were as a flame of fire. Does that mean he was shooting laser beams out of his eyes? Uh, what, what did Christ drink in moderation? He drank wine in moderation. Because what was his first miracle? He turned water to what? Wine. To wine. So he had a little drink at the wedding feast, didn't he? Yeah. So when we drink as a people, the whites of our eyes turn red. So now, what you see is the depiction, red eyes, white woolly hair. Have you ever seen this guy with white woolly hair? No. Never, right? Never. Yeah. So we could kind of cancel out a few of those, right? Go ahead. And his feet. Like it's a fine bread. And his feet. So now, I'm looking at, since I can see down near your feet, down at the bottom there. When I look at your feet, it's usually the same complexion as the rest of your body, correct? So it says his feet was like what? Fine brass. Like it's a fine brass. Now, brass is a derivative of brown. So when you look at Jesus the Christ, his feet was a brown color. But let's see how brown it was. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So when you burn something, does it get lighter or darker? darker? It gets darker. Have you ever seen this guy looking like a black man? No. Because this is not Jesus the Christ. That's this is right. the devil the Bible speaks of. That's and it's being forced upon you to invoke white supremacy. Right. They teach you that you're nothing and this is everything. That's right. Bring it up. So when you see this, you also see it in them that's walking to and fro. So that's why in the hood, you know what's so funny? A lot of times we get threatened by brothers that's in the same community here, right? But when there's a Braves game and that bus let out with all those white folks, you know no one says anything to them? Why is that? This has been beaten into your heads. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. When you see when you see this, you see them. That's why they walk through the trap with no problem. No one does anything to them in the trap. The drug dealers, the gangsters out here, only want to do something to their own people. Yes. Because you were taught self-hate. Right. You were taught to hate yourselves, everyone that looks like you, and love this image and everyone that looks like this. Right. That's why our sisters walk around with blonde weaves, walk around with blue eyes, all different things that are not attributes of their own. Right. Because they love the oppressor. Right. Y'all understand that? So sisters, y'all know what Jesus Christ looks like now? Before you go though, we're not done. So now, now, I have a question again. The bro where's the brother? Right there. Why are we on the bottom again? We're bottom oh, leader, hold on, right? before we go there, I'm sorry, before we go there. The brother had a question. He said, what separates us from, was it Africans? Right, okay. Give me Exodus 11 and seven. The brother asked a question first, then I'm going to touch that. Exodus 11 and 7. The book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. But against any of the children of Israel, uh -huh. shall not a dog move his tongue. So now, against any of the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel that comprises of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, it says, shall not a dog move its tongue. When you read Revelation chapter 22, the dog is talking about the other nations. That's right. The other nations cannot speak against the children of Israel. Why? Because we read earlier, we're created above all people on the face of the earth. Right. We are the greatest people on the planet. Whether you want to believe it or not, it doesn't matter to me. Because low self-esteem is something that afflicts our community. Right. We think lowly of ourselves. Right. But read that. Against man or beast. So they weren't allowed to speak against us. Or the beasts we had, the ox, the sheep, anything. Read. That ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference. The Lord did put a difference between who? Between the Egyptians. Between the Canaanites. And Israel. And the Israelites. There's a difference between Africans and Israelites. And it's not complexion. Don't think it's complexion. It's not complexion. Don't think this move, what we're teaching, is about complexion. Though we show you that Christ is a black man according to the Bible, it doesn't, it, the Israelites, it says, are as um, a cake unturned. Meaning, when you make a pancake, you leave it on one side too long, what happens to that one side? It burns, it gets really dark. But what happens to the side that you don't flip? It's really light. It's, it's, damn, it's, dagger, it's really, really light. So the children of Israel in Hosea chapter 7 says we're like a cake unturned. We vary in shades. So it's not a complexion thing. Because we have our people down in Venezuela who have very light skin, right. but that's still our people. That's you understand right. what I'm saying? So don't think it's a complexion campaign. No, it's an Israelite campaign. Right. We're about the 12 tribes of Israel has been scattered through slavery. Right. And we teach in the four corners of the earth to bring them back to the one true God. That's right. So there is a difference between Africans and Israelites. And it's right. not complexion. You were given the laws of God. They were not. That's, right. that's the difference. Go ahead, you got a question, bro? Hey, yes, they confused Moses and Paul with being an Egyptian. So now, real quick. Let's go. So now, my question to the brother again. Why are we on the bottom? We're on the bottom because we're the greatest? Because we commit sins. We're in the midst of sins. Always remember that. So now, when, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let me show y'all something. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 43. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Come on. The I need, need y'all to listen real good. Come on. Verse 43. The stranger that is within you. So now, we have other nations that live among us, right? Right? Other nations. Chinese, Japanese. The Korean man is in that store right there. Arabs behind us in this store. So we have the other nations around us, right? Go ahead. Shall get up above thee very high. So the other nations, why is it that we've been here for a lot longer, but they'll travel here and do better than us? Huh? Huh? They, they, you, you said we don't do not, but we read earlier, gather yourselves together. I, I like how the sister said that. The sister said, as a, they gather together as a nation. That is very, very heavy, what you just said. You don't realize it. Because here's the thing they all know they're the same nationality. We think we're African American, black, 
Asiatic black man, African. We are everything other than the children of Israel. So because they divided you, they're able to conquer you. You understand that? So read that again. The stranger that is, that is within thee uh -huh. shall get up above thee very high. So the stranger is going to get up above you very high. And thou shall come down very low. So why is the ghettos and slums mainly occupied by so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Because it's a prophecy of God. God says because you reject the commandments of God, because you choose not to follow his way, he's going to put the other nations above you and you're going to come down below them. It's very, it's very clear. But keep reading. He shall lend to thee and thou shall not lend to him. That's very important. When we go into a bank for a home loan, a car loan, a dag or tag loan, when you're trying to tag, when you tag your car, what is that called again? Title loan, thank you. When you go to a title loan, who owns Title Max? Who owns Title Max? Who owns the banks? Who gives us the loans? It's the other nations. You see that? God says they're going to lend to you and you're not going to lend to them. Ain't nobody coming to these the drug dealers here for no loan. You ever seen a white man out here coming for a loan? You tell me, bro. Never. That does not happen. But God says... He's going to put them in a position where you're going to have to go to them. You, say that again. You're going to need to. But let's not stop there. We're not going to stop there. Verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. So the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt or, or slavery by way of what? Ships. Now, I have a question. How do we get to this side of the world? Ships. On ships, right? Wait a minute. But that's in the Bible. God says you're going to go into slavery. Come on, bring it over here, officer. God says you're going to go into, sister, I need you to listen. God says you're going to go into slavery again, but this time by way of ships. What y'all don't realize is we go, to, we go to college and take history. We go to these museums to view history. But we won't open the Bible to find our history. The Bible is actually your history book. Read that again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this did happen. This is an actual fact. Go ahead. Hold on. You notice how we were transported on slave ships. Okay. But well, we're going to read it out of the Bible. God said this was going to happen to us because we broke his commandments. That's right. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. So what? The way he's, Moses is telling the children of Israel in the wilderness. Thou shalt see it no more again. Our homeland is actually Israel. We went over that earlier. Our homeland is Jerusalem, Israel. And because we broke God's commandments, we were never able to gather all together to go back to our homeland. Moses says you're never going to see it again. Go ahead. And then ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Now put this one down. Hold on. Right here. Excuse me, y'all. Right here. Hold this one up. So now, I want y'all to see this. Read that again. And then ye shall be sold. Do you remember this, us being sold? Sisters, y'all remember this? Slave auction blocks? God says, once you get off those slave ships, you are going to be sold. This actually happened. We were sold, you were sold all over the world in slavery. 12 years of slave showed you that, right? Go ahead. Unto your enemies. Unto who? Your enemies. Wait a minute. So who was buying us in slavery? Our, God calls our enemies, but what, who are they, sis? White man, the Chinese man. But you don't know, in the 1300s, we were in slavery under the Chinese. You didn't know that. In the 8th century, all right, brother, listen, check that fly out. Our address is on there. What you might, might not know, in the 8th century, we were under, in slavery under the Arabs. We've been in slavery more than we've been free. We've been enslaved more than we have been free. Go ahead. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall bind. No man could redeem us. Martin Luther King tried. Malcolm X tried. Marcus Garvey tried. Sojourner Truth tried. Harriet Tubman tried. Many of our people tried, but did they succeed on a national level? No. Because God says they wouldn't. Give me on um, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. God says. God says. 
God says, we're going to serve our enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent the enemies against us. Why? Right here. Thank you. We broke his commandment. So therefore, God sent our enemies against us. Go ahead. And hunger. When we're hungry, we must go to them for food. Kroger, Publix, Walmart. They own those things. We don't. Go ahead. And in thirst. When you're thirsty, Dasani, Coca-Cola, Tropicana, we must go to them Bring for drink. Up. Go ahead. And in nakedness. When you're naked, you must go to them for clothing. This is what God is saying. This is what, this is what we rebel against. We rebel against the truth. That's like when they were talking about uh, stop buying all this Gucci. Right. But, people still be buying. but here's the thing. What's the difference between Gucci and Levi's and Timberland and Nike? They all owned by white people. Yes, right. It doesn't matter. It, it's, it, it's the same thing. No matter no matter which which brand. So what we do is what we do is we buy the cheaper of the devil because we still got to go to them for clothes. Right. But I refuse to give the devil two thousand dollars for a daggone shirt. Right. No, I buy a twenty dollars shirt, keep more money in my pocket so I can help my people. That's, right. That's what I'd rather do. Go ahead. And in what of all things? And when you want all things, you want a driver's license, you got to go to them. You want a birth certificate for your child, proving that's your child, you have to go to them. You want to ride the martyr, you got to go to them. You can name it. You, you die. Your people want to collect what you have, you must go to them for a certificate saying that you die. You must go to them for the want of all things. That's what God says. Now, what I want to show you is, that's how angry the Lord is with the children of Israel. Because he gave you everything. And you say, I don't want that. I want to serve other gods. I want to be under these nations. I want to marry them. But God gave you the best of the best. He gave you the whole earth. He made the earth for you. Second Ezra 6. Verse 54. You can put that down. Second Ezra 6 and 54. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Come on. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. So God made Adam. And Adam was the first man who was over all creatures, correct? God made Adam as the first man. He was the Lord of all the people at the time. And the cre I mean, all the creatures. Go ahead. Of him come we all. So everybody comes out of Adam. Go ahead. And the people also. Whom thou hast chosen. The people who you have chosen. The Bible says we all come from Adam and the people that the people that he's chosen. Who did the Lord choose again? Don't forget. Don't lose a thought. Who did Thank you, sister. Lord chose the Lord chose the children of Israel. So every all the nations come out of Adam and the people that he chose, which is the children of Israel. Go ahead. All this. Have I spoken before thee, uh -huh. O Lord, uh -huh. because thou madest the world for our sakes. Wait, that's very heavy. The, Ezra says the Lord made the world for the Israelites' sake. Y'all don't know how, how special you are. Hey, say that again, brother. Say that on the mic. We're supposed to own everything. The brother gets it. We're supposed to. And listen, remember, listen, remember, remember earlier I read we're the greatest people on the planet, above all people? How are we such great inventors? How are we such a strong people? How, how is that? Why? Because God made you different than everybody else. So, so now, here's the thing. Let, let's finish that. Let's finish that. I want to touch on, I want to touch on something with the system. Go ahead. Verse 56. Uh-huh. As for the other people. As for the other nations other than Israel. Which also come of Adam. They come from Adam too. Go ahead. Thou hast said that they are nothing. God That's says right. other nations are nothing. See, the, see, I like this brother. The, his expression gives it away. His expression gives it away. He's saying, he's like, wait a minute. I've never heard that before. You see that? Because what? The churches that we have fellowshiped in for all of our lives, we was in there baby, probably playing the drums, singing in the choir, in the kids' choir, doing all of that stuff, right? They're not set up to teach you who you are. They're, not, they're set up to isolate certain scriptures to make you feel good, that you can give your money. 
if y'all got pictures like that hanging up in our church, y'all really believe this so if we if y'all believe in this, that's right. It like, don't even feel right. Thank you. The brother said when you go to churches and the white image of Christ is hanging up, it doesn't even feel right. right. Guess what? The feeling you now have, every brother here has had the same feeling. That's, right. that's why we started searching for the truth. Because we're like, wait a minute, we, we just don't feel right. Something ain't right about this white man looking over me in this church. I feel, I feel like the FBI looking at me or something. You start feeling funny, right? Go ahead. But be like unto spittle. They're like unto spittle. They're like spit. That's what God said these other nations are. But go ahead. And has lacking the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth it from a vessel. You know you got a, a cup of soda or something, a cup of water, and you spill a little bit? You ain't worried about that. You still got a full cup, right? God said that's what these other nations are. They're just like a little drop that falls out of a vessel. Go ahead. And now, oh Lord. Now here's the point that I want. Behold, these heathen. Now, the nations that he just quoted that God says they're nothing. Right. He now says, God, but these nations that you made. Go ahead. Which have ever been reputed as nothing. Which have always had the reputation of being nothing. Go ahead have begun to be lords over us. Hey, how is it that they are now lords over us? What's the million dollar question again? Because we are in sin. I, I, like, I like this group right here. All praises to the Most High. And hey, give these brothers and sisters a round of applause, man. All praises. Y'all been listening very attentively, asking good questions, so on and so forth. Go ahead. And to devour us. So now, not only do they rule over us, but they devour us. Because guess what? We'll be in the black, so-called black neighborhoods for years. We don't own anything ourselves. But they'll move into our neighborhoods, open up stores, take every dollar we got. Say that again, brother. We be in there all the time. All the, it's a vicious cycle, ain't it? Here's what we got to do. We got to come back to the one true God. Because the way the Bible governs us, we are commanded to deal with our people. We're commanded to deal with our people. But we have to repent. It's like all these brothers. We all repented and began to keep the laws of God. That's what we must do. 